The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmed will be the one ruler of the Romans. Jeroboam was a picture of the apostate Paul. Now, Jeroboam was a man who caused the children of Israel to sin by worshiping idols. Jeroboam is the man who invented the two golden calf religion. And that is nothing more than ancient Christianity. You see, the curse of rebuilding Jericho is ancient Christianity. You see, the curse of Canaan is ancient Christianity. You see, the religion of Pharaoh was ancient Christianity. Pharaoh thought he was God and his son was considered God. This is going into that father and son religion we call Christianity. And the only reason why God killed the firstborn of Pharaoh is because it was a picture of God Almighty causing the prophet Isa to die in the future. You see, Paul is seen in the story of David when he took another man's wife and he killed that man. That's a picture of what Paul did. Paul killed the prophet Esau on biblical record and then he proceeded to steal his church. He created a religion out of this baby. He made this baby a God, and that's why that baby, that unknown baby of David, was born sick, because that newborn baby had to die. This man, Paul, is more evil than you think. I can give you another metaphor on the story of Uriah. Now, David was a picture of Paul. Paul killed the father. Think about it. His skinny New Testament destroyed the Old Testament. This is seen in the parable. When Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, when he said the seven lean cows will eat up the fat flesh cows. And the skinny lean cows was nothing more than the New Testament. And the fat flesh cows was nothing more than the Old Testament. The New Testament destroyed the Old Testament. And Paul is the man who opposes God and who opposes the people. Paul killed the father and then he stole his church and then he created a religion. He created a God out of that baby and that's why that baby has to die. Now Jeroboam, his name means he that opposes the people. And you're going to see that the apostate Paul is opposing the people right now. Now let's go to the book of Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings 11, 28. And the man, Jeroboam, was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. You see, Jeroboam is a picture of Paul. And Jeroboam was a young man, just like Benjamin. Okay? This young man, Revelation, is always going back to Paul. Just like Benjamin, who was the beloved son, who was always at home with his father. Okay? That's a picture of Paul right now. He's at home with his father. And that is Satan. And this young man, I keep telling you over and over again, is greater than his brother. Just like Ephraim was greater than his older brother, Manasseh. This story is told over and over again. So this young man who was in charge over all the tribes was a picture of Paul. Paul was the John the Baptist. He was the man who had many flocks and herds, and that all represents churches. He is the John the Baptist 
Why do you think John the Baptist was called John the Baptist? This is going into a metaphor. How Paul is the man with all of the churches. Now Jeroboam was from the tribe of Ephraim. And he was in charge of all the tribes of Israel. The only tribe he could not touch was Judah. Because that's going into a metaphor. You see, Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. And this is seen right here. God promised David that he would give him a light always. And that's why David was the ruler of one tribe. His seed was the ruler of the tribe of Judah. Could nobody touch that? Although Jeroboam was the king of the northern kingdom, David, his seed, was still a light. And that was in one tribe. And that is also a metaphor in how Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. This is seen in the story of Uriah. When Uriah was only interested in one woman. Her name is Bathsheba. Get it? Bath? This is a nation that believes in ritual washings, ablution, wudu, etc., etc. Bathsheba represented the nation of Islam. And Uriah only had one woman he was interested in. And that woman was a nation. And that's a picture of the nation of Islam. Now, let's get back on 1 Kings. Verse 29. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he had clawed himself with a new garment. This is a picture of the apostate Paul. The man with the garment. The man with the hair. Okay? The man that is called the wolf in sheep clothing. Back to verse 29. And he clawed himself with a new garment. And they two were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him. And rent it in twelve pieces. Now, this is a picture of the apostate Paul. The wolf in sheep clothing. Open up your eyes. There's nothing new under the sun. You see, Paul is the creator of Christianity. He is the creator of this golden calf religion. Okay? The father and son religion we call Christianity is seen in Jeroboam making the two golden calves causing the nation of Israel to sin. Now let's go to verse 35. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto thee even ten tribes. So because of Solomon's sin, God promised that he was going to take the kingdom from the seed of David. But he was just going to leave David one tribe. And that was Judah. All the other tribes or all the other churches was going to Paul. Was going to Jeroboam. And the prophet Esau would only be the Messiah of one nation. And that nation is the nation of Islam. Verse 36. And unto his son Will I give one tribe that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen to put my name there. See, this is a metaphor. This is all going into how John the Baptist, which was a picture of Paul, is ruler over all these other churches. Okay, Christianity is the largest and the most powerful religion. And Paul is is the ruler he is the father over all these churches but there's one church he can't touch okay and that church is the nation of islam that tribe is going into the nation of islam okay paul can't touch that one okay he can do whatever he want to do with potiphar's wife he can do whatever he want to do with that slut, that sleazy Christian church. But he cannot touch Bathsheba. He cannot touch that virtuous religion we call Islam. Let's go on to 1 Kings chapter 12 and 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, 
Then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So this is what Jeroboam did. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. That's the father and the son religion. That's the curse of Canaan. That is the curse of rebuilding Jericho. This is the religion of Esau. This is the religion of Paul and the prophet Esau. Okay. This is going into the parables, B-A-A-Ls, and this is going into the parables. This is going into the blend. This is going into the religion that associates partners with God. It is called Christianity. So the king took counsel and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. So this is going into the two false gods. The prophet Esau is not God, okay? And although Paul calls himself the father, he is not God. This is the pair. This is the blend. This is the Esau that God hates. It's a religion. And yes, the nation of Edom. The white race has been guilty of 99% of the false teaching we have here, okay, in America. And that nation will bear the judgment. But Esau is deeper than just the skin tone. Esau is going into the twins. It is going into the two gods. It is going into the golden calves. Now, you're not going to hear nobody bring that out. Okay, this is advanced, but you can follow this all the way back to Genesis 9, 22. When Ham seen his father's nakedness and his son Canaan was cursed as a result of it. Now, there's many parables in the Bible of the rich man and the poor man, of the two sons and the twins, of Zerah and Perez and Jacob and Esau. This is all going into the golden calves, okay? That is the prophet Isa, and that is going into Paul. This is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questioned Jesus. He said, did you say to the people to worship you and your mother as gods? Now, God is so funny, okay? He always exposes Paul as a woman. Like, for instance, Paul is referenced with Jezebel. He is called the prophetess. He is called Jael, the tent peg killer, who's been killing the church with the cross, okay? Go back to your Bible and study Benjamin. Benjamin was a tribe that was gay, okay? They asked for men, and instead, they was given a concubine, and they abused her all night, and all the other tribes swore not to give their daughters unto Benjamin. You see, the tribe of Benjamin had homosexual tendencies. And God is always making fun of Paul in the scriptures if you study, okay? He is Jael. He is the prophetess. He is Jezebel. And he is Mary. Mary, 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 Mary. Okay, the children of Israel were caught up in worshiping two golden calves. And that is a picture of what you're doing right now in Christianity. You're worshiping the father and you're worshiping the son. Now, Allah has no sons. He got you in his trick bag. If you go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 15, you will see that Paul is the father. In Christ Jesus, Paul is the father and Jesus is the son. That is the picture of the two golden calves. Now let's keep going on. Let's go to a story that's in our Bible that a lot of people do not even know what is going into. Let's go to the story of Ur and Onan. This is seen in Genesis 38 and 7. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. The Lord killed him. This boy was so wicked. God killed him. His name was Er or Ur. 
It is going into the air. It is going into Paul, okay? Paul was the earth, okay? He was the one who stole his brother's birthright and became the firstborn, okay? So now let's keep going. Verse 8, And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto your brother's wives, and marry her, and raise up seed to your brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. See, you have no idea what this is all going into. This is going into Paul, and this is going into Christ. You see, Paul created this religion, and God killed him. Now, the prophet Esau was just like Joseph. He was like, you know what? I ain't finna touch Potiphar's wife, okay? And right here, Onan knew that if he went into this woman and dropped the seed, this baby, these children, would not be his. That's why Onan spilled it on the ground, and that's exactly what the prophet Esau did. He refused to have anything to do with the Christian church. And that's why the prophet Esau will die at the last day. Only for God to show the world that Jesus is not God. This is seen in the story of Pharaoh. Would you think God just loves killing babies? He killed the firstborn of Pharaoh because this baby was considered God. And that's exactly what he's going to do at the last day with the prophet Esau. He's going to cause him to die a natural death. Everybody thought he was supernatural. He had a supernatural birth. They thought he was God. But guess what? At the end, you will know that Jesus is no God. When God gets his fame and his renowned glory and he causes the prophet Esau to die and he destroys the very foundation of the Christian church. So this story of Ur and Onan is a picture of Paul and the prophet Esau. Paul created this religion and Jesus had nothing to do with it. He was like Onan spilling the seed on the ground. He was not going to take that church as his wife. You know why? Because the prophet Isa is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. Now I have more to expound on. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 14 verse 5. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam come up to ask a thing for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall thou say unto her, for it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another. So God is getting on Paul right now. He always disses him as a woman. Jeroboam's wife is a picture of Paul feigning himself to be another, okay? Acting like someone else. Acting like the sheep. We know you a wolf. We know you a wolf. He is the wolf in sheep clothing. He is the prophet Isis twin. He is the false messiah, okay? He is the zunk of the Christian church. Verse 6, And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door. That he said, come in, thou wife of Jeroboam, why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. In other words, I have bad news for the Christian church, okay? I have bad news for the wife of Jeroboam. Go tell Jeroboam, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, for as much as I exalted you from among the people, and made you prince over my people Israel. This is metaphorically speaking to Paul. Verse 8. And rent the kingdom away from the house of David. I took the kingdom from the prophet Esau. And I gave it to you. And yet thou has not been as my servant David. You have not been as faithful as the prophet Esau. Peace and blessings be upon him. That's what he's saying. Who kept my commandments. And who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in mine eyes. 
but has done evil above all that were before thee. You see, Paul was the last Adam, okay? The first Adam screwed up, okay? And the second Adam was a greater screw up than even the first Adam. That's why he's telling Jeroboam, look, man, everybody made mistakes, man, but you blew it, okay? You did wicked above them all. Now let's keep going. Verse 9, but has done evil above that which were before you, for thou hast gone and made the other gods. Now, who created another religion? Paul. Paul created this father and son religion. For thou hast gone and made the other gods in molten images to provoke me to anger, and has cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man take away dung till it be all gone. Now, verse 11. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord hath spoken. Arise thou therefore. Get thee to thine own house. And when thy feet enter into the city. The child shall die. So at the last day. At the day of completion. Okay. The prophet Isa is going to die. This baby that was born sick. Just like David's son. It's the same thing with Jeroboam's son. Abijah. Okay, his name means God is my father. That baby is about to die. Verse 13, and all Israel shall mourn for him. Now go to Revelations 1 and 7. It talks about God causing the day of the Lord to be bitter because there's going to be a cry throughout the land. Just like it says in Micah, he will make it as the morning of an only son. Okay, there's going to be a lot of weeping and a lot of crying at the death of the prophet Esau. You know why? Because it's all Paul's fault. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. Now, in the Hades, we have the belief that the prophet Esau will die at the last day. And he will be buried right next to the prophet. Just like that man of Judah who cried out against Jeroboam's altar okay who was misled by the senior prophet and when he was buried the senior prophet was buried right next to him we believe that the prophet Isa peace be upon him will be buried right next to the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him going on because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. So Israel is going to mourn for him. They're going to bury him. Why? For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Now you blind. You fail to realize that if anyone knows that God is merciful, it is the prophet Esau. You see, the prophet Esau was like Jehoshaphat. When Ahab, his family, whom he said, I and my people are one. I am as you are. Your people are my people. That's what Jehoshaphat told Ahab. Okay, Ahab tried to get Jehoshaphat killed. He told Jehoshaphat, put on your royal robes. In other words, you the king Jesus, you the king Jesus, while he went into the battle disguised as a soldier. But there was a certain man in 1 Kings 22 and 33 who drew his bow at random and he got the king of Israel between the joints and the harness. That's exactly what we're doing right here in the house of David. We know that Paul is the father of the Christian church. And we know that Paul is the Ahab. Okay. Who caused Jehoshaphat to almost be destroyed. Okay. If Jehoshaphat wouldn't have cried out. He would have been killed. Okay. And Ahab would have got away. But see no. 
Ahab was destroyed and Jehoshaphat was spared. But if you read in Chronicles, okay, Jehoshaphat was checked by the prophet. The prophet told him, he said, should you love the wicked and help the ungodly? Okay, he told him, nevertheless, there's good things found in you. You see, Jehoshaphat's problem was he made a wicked alliance with Ahab. And if you read in the Quran, the Quran, and if you read in the Quran, Jesus, and if you read in the Quran, God tells the prophet Isa that they will settle what they both differed about in the future. There's some things that we don't know, but we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Jesus that he's going to settle their differences. Okay. He's going to settle what they differed about. Okay. So let's understand this, that there's things in the Bible that are secret. There's things that are hidden in parables. And we are living in a day when the knowledge of the Lord is covering the earth like the waters cover the sea. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.